Hello, everybody. I am joined right now by Tsubasa Inaba. You, sir, are a producer with Sony Santa Monica. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Very cool. And we are taking a look at White Knight Chronicles. That's right. So uh, this game's been out for a little while in Japan now. There's been a little bit of a delay before uh, you guys are just now about to put it out here. I must admit, yeah. So could, could kind of start off by telling us uh, what have you guys been doing since the Japanese launch to get it ready for North America and also, like, you know, how have you polished it up in that, uh, that extra time that you've had? Um, I hate giving excuses, but <laughs> I, I must say the localizing has taken us a little bit of time, uh, so, you know, with, you with a lot of text and voiceover, for example, just to give you some scope as to what, what kind of volume we're talking about. I think in total we spent between eight to nine weeks in a recording studio just to do the voices. That, that's excluding the editing and all that that goes on afterwards. Um, so that's how much time we've dedicated into this game. Uh, that's localization alone. And then, uh, obviously, we've been trying to take that, take that time to our advantage by bringing the U.S. Uh, SKU up to speed with Japan, whereas Japan, yes, they, they did release early, but post-release they've had update patches, mm -hmm. whereas the U.S. version will have all of those up to on par with Japan, okay. where they are now. So, uh, you know, I, I'd say that's a, that's a fair uh, argument. That sounds fair to me. Yeah. So, since the game is new for the North American territory, can you kind of give us the, the real brief pitch on what this game's all about? Uh, for the single player campaign, uh, first you will uh, encounter one of the main characters called Leonard. Uh, you'll be, you should, you're seeing him on screen at the moment. Uh, Leonard acquires a special skill to transform into the White Knight uh, quite early on in the game. Uh, the trick here is that Leonard himself is a little perplexed as well. He's, he's kind of like, why is it me? Uh, you know, what happened? What's going on here? Mm. Uh, so part of the story is is to try and solve the mystery behind why Leonard has that special skill. Why is he the chosen one to become the White Knight? Uh, then there's also the the core of the story, uh, quite typical to J JRPGs, of saving the princess uh, during a ceremony of the princess of coming of age. Uh, she is captured and and, and kidnapped. Uh, so your ultimate goal is to save the princess and bring her back to uh, the, the, the town of Valandor. Um, but as that story unfolds, of course, in parallel, you're trying to solve the mystery of Leonard and his white knight, uh, and many side stories also unfold as well. Um, don't want to give too much away. Sure. Um, and that's, that's the single player campaign uh, only. And then if you go into the online components, uh, that's another uh, experience ready for you. Um, should I just keep talking? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, consisting of three main pillars, uh, GeoNet. Uh, this is uh, basically a proprietary SNS that exists within the world of White Knight Chronicles. It's, it's basically what the, 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 the core feature sets that you would expect in an online title, be it you know, user profile, uh, you know, uh, information that you would uh, receive from the servers, uh, server uh, maintenance schedules, uh, friends lists, uh, your gateway to going to game lobbies, uh, so on and so forth. Um, once you are in uh, GeoNet, you are enabled to go, for example, uh, create a blog post. Okay. Uh, you can talk about the latest uh, activities that you're experiencing in the gameplay, where you're having trouble, and then other viewers may read your post and add a reply saying, oh, you know what? This is how you do it. Um, so it's a great ma way to meet new friends or you know, connect with existing friends sure. uh, and stay on par with them. Uh, <clears throat> you can also obviously kick off online quests uh, with either friends or uh, the server will find uh, auto matchmake, uh, find party members for you. Either way, you can do it both ways. Okay. Um, so that's kind of neat. Uh, also, the lobby space, uh, we call it Georama. Georama is a, is a feature that has been included in level 5 games traditionally. Uh, previously, it was PS2 system, so it wasn't online. It was more part of the uh, single player campaign. Right. Yeah. Whereas now, uh, they've took it to the next step where the Georama is your launching pad. It's your lobby, and it's customizable. 
which is really cool. It's all the way back to like Dark Cloud too. I remember like it's Correct. been a while since. Uh, since yes. I thought about the Giorama yeah, feature. Exactly. So you guys it, are keeping it alive. It, yeah, keeping it alive. It's it's basically level five signature. Mm. Uh, you know, saying yes, we're still here. But it sounds like uh, it's more of just like a. It's it's not just a decorative space anymore. It sounds like it actually contributes to the gameplay. Like Correct. Kind of yeah. generate items and stuff. Can that, you that talk is, a little bit more about how it ties into the gameplay? Sure, sure. Um, it, as you say, it, it's 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 not just cosmetic. It's it's actually functional. It's it's living and it's growing. Uh, one of the elements is that you can uh, scout NPC, non-playable characters to come live in your Jirama. Uh, let's say Ron, the farmer here, uh, he has uh, f flowers plus three means he has uh, especially skills in, in, in growing flowers. Uh, what you can do then in the Jirama field is create a flower patch for him to go and cultivate and eventually the crops uh, he will generate for you uh, he will be more skilled than others uh, in, the, in flowers, for example. And what you do here is you design your Jirama space based on... You can, it, it's kind of a twofold where you design your space and then you look for NPCs to populate it. But you, you don't want to go randomly scout people mm -hmm. and, and allocate the wrong people to your space because without the, the right elements there, they can't really help you out. Right. Um, so you want the people who are going to make the contributions that kind of support your play correct. style? Yeah. yeah okay. So if, if you're looking at farmers, you're going to be looking at, you know, uh, like you see here, mushroom field or flower field or, uh, or so on and so forth. Okay. Whereas if you're looking at magicians, you'll be looking for more uh, elements that they will be specializing sure. uh, in hope that they will generate something in, in return for you. Uh, What's really cool about this is not only you will benefit from this, but also the friends that visit you mm. in this space okay. uh, will also benefit from those features. Very cool. So uh, let's uh, let's take a look at the the quest system if we can. Sure. Uh, let's go kill some stuff. <laughs> uh, quests are designed. I mean, uh, it's basically a four-player capped uh, mm. co-op okay. experience. Uh, so you're not out there to harass other players. <laughs> no, no griefing in this game? Uh, hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> um, Although you do have voice chat. We do have you, voice you chat. You have added that, right? Yeah, we have. So. Uh, per request by the Western Markets, um, you know, that was one of the strongest requests that we've okay. received. So hopefully everybody's on their best behavior. I, I, I certainly hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, behave, people. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, the, the, the quests add, add a whole lot to uh, the, the actual White Knight experience. Um, setting up a quest is quite easy, straightforward. Um, you, can either, you can either look for rooms that have already been established or create your own. Um, again, from creating a room name, we have a select of uh, preset names or you can enter your own. Uh, you can also set passwords if you don't like you know, people that you don't know coming into your your space. Sure. Um, that that will help you, you know, limit that to to your friend list, for example. Is it possible to have AI characters join you if you don't have any actual actual players to, to come in, or do you have to have real players? Uh, no that's NPCs. A question. I believe the system will wait to populate based on online players. Okay. Okay. What you, were, what you just saw was uh, the gatekeeper for the lobbies. Okay. The gatekeeper for the lobbies is, is the one who you approach if you want to launch a quest. Okay. Or, or you can go from the world map that you're seeing here okay. um, and select a quest. Okay. This, choosing this method, however, will uh, automatically kick you into the auto matchmaking. Mm. Whereas if you launch it from the lobby space, you can be specific. Okay. Uh, once you've actually selected one of the quests, you can uh, take a look at the details and then uh, launch the quest from, from here. Uh, you can also decide whether you want, you know, how many players, auto-matching, etc., uh, before you actually activate. Uh, once you do so, the quest will start, wait for so many minutes that you've set. So you've got kind of a lobby system going here. Uh, so somewhat. Sort of, well, you're kind of waiting for your friends to join. Yeah, in. It, it's a waiting space for oh. your friends to uh, come in. 
in this example, we've set we've set it to five minutes. Once okay. that five minutes is uh, is up, uh, the quest will start automatically. Uh, whether it's just you sell yourself or you know all four players are there, uh, there's no restriction actually to to playing a quest by yourself. Uh, obviously, the the quests have been designed for you to play co-op with four players. So trying to take it on single-handedly may be a little more tough. <laughs> Uh, was there, is there any adjustment to the difficulty based on how many people are in the match? Or the uh, or no, it? it doesn't look at that. Okay. Um, so the difficulty level will so remain the same. Definitely the more the merrier then? The more the merrier, yeah. it will be easier for you to okay. uh, get through it. Uh, obviously it's more fun uh, as sure. well. As, uh, you can scroll through the actual maps. Uh, one thing notable about White Knight Chronicles, the maps are quite large uh, and there are no loading times uh, once you are inside them, uh, which is, I think is, is really nice. Um, the, on the maps, you'll see the stars, as you saw earlier. Those are marking what, where your you know, potential destinations are within the map in hope that you will find the item that you're looking for or uh, whatnot. It depends on what the quest is designed for. Now again, she's having to take on these uh, enemy characters by herself rather than four characters, so it's not going to be easy. What can you tell us about the combat? I see these kind of different attacks down at the bottom. Right. How does, how does the, the combat flow and system work? Um, we call it the active turn-based combat system. Um, rather than a, a traditional turn-based uh, combat where you know the screen pans away from, from the gameplay and you kind of have to sit there and wait for things to happen. Um, this one is, is, you know, by definition active. You, you get to run around, attack your enemies, but different body parts, for example. You know, you Stab him in the knee. Yeah, get him in the <laughs> knee where it hurts, uh, or in the torso or in the head. Uh, you're basically waiting for that circle to fill up. Uh, it's, if you ask me, I think that's it's, it's just the right time for you to think about what you want to do next. Mm. Um, and there is a separate screen that you can actually edit uh, the bars at the bottom uh, to w which skills or which moves you want to uh, place there. Um, these are skill sets that you earn uh, throughout the gameplay and what you do is you allocate them uh, accordingly. Again, uh, player characters can de be designed to be skillful in the single-handed sword as you see here or they can have uh, bow and arrow, uh, spears, double-handed sword, uh, magic skills, all of which uh, skills, skills are acquired. Uh, you kind of build up as you go. Okay. What's the, what's the focus on loot in this game? Is that kind of your primary motivating factor? The kind of the acquisition of getting better weapons and armor and stuff, is that sort of what drives you along? Uh, for, for the online or? Yeah, just kind of the, the development of your online character. Are you just kind of constantly looking for better gear? Um, or is it more about the storyline that's sort of pushing you along? It's, it's, uh, it's a, well, it's a mix of, it, it doesn't change, the online experience will not change your single player campaign. Uh, experience. Uh, however, it can enhance it. Uh, by that I mean uh, there are online quests where you can obtain special items that are only available within the online quests. So no matter how hard or how many hours you spend single player, there are some items that you just will not find. Um, once you've found those items in the online quests, you can take them back into your single player campaign. Okay. It crosses over. So uh, again, it, a very nice way of, of, of meshing the two, the single player and the online uh, experiences together instead of splitting them up completely. What is the split though? I mean, if you know, somebody wants to buy this game purely as a single player experience, I mean, how many hours are we talking? Do you feel like, like are they going to get a satisfying experience if they never take the game online? I, I would say so. I mean, still, it, even the single player campaign itself, uh, I, I think would take the average player a good 40 hours to get through, uh, which is pretty hefty already. Um, and then you throw the online elements on, and that's that, that's another you know story on its own. Sure. sure. So, uh, I, you know, I personally would recommend people to go online. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, going to the items and 
and uh, just just the experience just itself, being able to play with actual friends or or friends you've met online, sure. uh, just changes the the game dynamics. Sure. Well, uh, Sabasa, I know uh, I know it's a great relief to you that you guys are finally oh yes coming absolutely. down the home stretch on yes, this one. Yes, very happy. Um, when can we look for it? Uh, February second, tw- uh, twenty ten. It's right around soon. the corner. That's yeah, pretty soon. Cool. All right. Well, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you.